So I want to turn it over to Iris, and she's going to go over the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act for you. The district is going to be the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act agency for the, for the San Benito County, and she's going to give you the details of that. And Iris. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, again, I'm Iris Priestaff, and I'm president of Todd Groundwater. And as you can figure from our name, we specialize in groundwater studies. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, we have been able to work in San Benito County since 1989. So uh, thank you for your hospitality. And uh, we've worked for a lot of the public agencies in San Benito County and a lot of private organizations too. And throughout this work, what I've noticed in this county is really a steadfast commitment to groundwater sustainability, having groundwater supply, groundwater storage available for us now and for future generations. So, um, if I wanted to make a point to you, it's that groundwater basin management has been ongoing in this basin and county for a long time. And at first it was with development of local groundwater supplies and then local surface water supplies of Hernandez and Piscines and the, the percolation that Jeff was talking about when releases from the reservoirs are allowed to percolate to the groundwater basin. And then, of course, there was the importation of water through the San Felipe project. That was in response to uh, an overdraft situation that was developing. And that water is brought in for conjunctive use, using surface water and groundwater together. And all of this has been happening with regular reporting regular reporting to the entire community about the status of water supply and management in this county. And that's through the annual groundwater reports. And I put the, um, the website up there. You can get on and read the annual reports. They've been going on since a long, long time. A long, long time. I, I, I got them back to 1992, but I know that they've been uh, produced uh, since before then. So that's a regular source of information available to everybody. And then there have been formal groundwater management plans. And uh, these were done in accordance with the state water code at the time. And the first one was done in 1998, and that was the groundwater management plan. And, uh, and one of the things about these plans is that they've always been collaborative. Collaborative among the water agencies uh, in the county. So in 1998, the groundwater management plan was a collaborative effort of Aromas, City of Hollister, San Juan Batista, San Benito County Water District, Sunny Slope County Water District, and Tres Pinos. Then that was updated in 2003. And that was through the Water Resources Association. So again, a collaborative effort. And um, I'd like to mention also that there's always been cooperation. So for example, the first groundwater management plan was in cooperation with the county, the Farm Bureau, the Builders and Developers Association, Granite Rock, Sierra Club, and others. So this is a wonderful legacy of ongoing groundwater management. And so things are changing. And the biggest change that I've seen in my entire career has been the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act that was uh, passed into law in 2014. It became law 2015. And uh, this is really landmark legislation. There's been no uh, legislation in groundwater in California ever like this. And what it does is it provides a framework for sustainable groundwater management. 
And I'm sure a lot of you know that there's a lot of groundwater basins in this state that are in overdraft. And basically, what this legislation is saying, um, no, overdraft has got to end in the state of California. And that's what the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act is about. So one of the key tenets of the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act is it actually enables local agencies to do groundwater management. And that's basic, that the entire state recognizes that groundwater management is best achieved locally. Okay, so we've got our mandate here. But, um, but there is a role for the state, and part of it is assistance. And I would want to point out that the Department of Water Resources is basically making itself very available. They're providing information. You should see their website. They're providing guidance. It's not easy to interpret the uh, Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. It, it's um, a complex piece of law, and it takes a lot of interpretation. The Department of Water Resources is helping with that. And, moreover, they're going to come through with funding, which is going to be very attractive to a lot of agencies. <coughs> but then again, SIGMA, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, is required. Compliance is the law. And uh, frankly, there's going to be a role for state intervention if necessary. So what's going to happen if some local agencies, and it certainly isn't going to happen here in San Benito County, if some local agencies in other counties are unable to step up and do sustainable groundwater management, then the state is going to intervene. Their intent is to intervene temporarily. Basically, you know, we've come to help you. And they're going to come and they're going to help local agencies get it together. And then their idea is that they do want to step out. So, I'm only spending about five minutes talking about uh, the Sigma, which frankly has already been the subject of hours and hours and hours of seminars and meetings and conferences. But uh, the most basic requirements are, first of all, that all of the groundwater basins that are affected by this law, there has to be the formation of what we call a local groundwater sustainability agency. And of course, every law is going to come with a bunch of acronyms. You know, we've got SIGMA and we've got GSAs, Groundwater Sustainability Agencies. So these have to be formed to cover the entire groundwater basin. And then the law requires that the groundwater sustainability agencies prepare a groundwater sustainability plan. And what this plan is going to do, it's going to lay out all of the features of the groundwater basin, everything you need to know about a groundwater basin is going to be in the GSP. And then it's also going to define how are we going to manage this groundwater basin. And again, it's management for local purposes, defined by local people. How are we going to define it? And if we're not in terms of our sustainability objectives, if we're not there yet, how are we going to get there? and how are we going to stay there with that sustainability. So, what are the effective basins? Well, the fact is that the Department of Water Resources has defined groundwater basins in the state of California. And uh, did you know that there are 515? A lot of them are out in the, out in the Mojave Desert, but um, of those 515 groundwater basins in California, 127 are affected. And these are the ones that have been designated by the Department of Water Resources as being medium or high priority. 
And they based this priority system that's got very low, low, medium, high. Uh, based on a lot of things, how much is the basin used? How much is it relying on? How much ag pumping is there? How many municipal wells? Is it going to be relied on in the future? What's the population? A lot of factors went into this prioritization, and, um, and it basically makes sense. So uh, locally, the affected basins here are uh, up in Santa Clara County is the Yagas sub-basin and then in San Benito County itself the Bolsa sub-basin Hollister sub-basin and the San Juan Batista sub-basin here then in addition is the uh, Pajaro Valley groundwater basin, and that laps into San Benito, Monterey, Santa Cruz counties. And then, you know, I didn't label it here, but is Abby here yet? Okay, good. Well, she's probably going to talk about the Salinas uh, basins over here. Um, some of those are high and medium priority, too. So those are the basins that are affected. And again, San Benito County has um, a baker's dozen of groundwater basins, and some of those are low and very low uh, priority. They're not required to uh, comply with SIGMA, but these are. So one of the points I wanted to make about these groundwater basins is I said before that groundwater basin management has been going on in this county for you know, decades upon decades. But we have defined the groundwater basins Differently, we did it, you know, based on um, our own criteria for geology um, and management purposes. Well, the law says that these are the basins now. So the fact is that a lot of the groundwater basin management has been focused in on the, the northern portions of the basins here, Zone Six, to be specific, has been a real focus of groundwater basin management. And so what's going to happen is that there are some landowners here, businesses, property owners, um, in this area that's been managed before. And it will still be managed, but it's going to be managed through this new law. And then there are going to be landowners uh, elsewhere where they've not been participating in groundwater basin management so much. And I would say to you, uh, here comes Sigma. So, um, so groundwater basin management will change in terms of its boundaries. So SIGMA, again, it's a very detailed law. It's very comprehensive. People have been working on this for a very long time to make sure that it works. It's years in the making. And one of the things that that the law recognizes is that sustainability in many basins is many, many years off. We all know about uh, overdraft in the Central Valley. It's going to take decades uh, to turn that around. So anyway, the, the law sets deadlines because we have to get this done. And so I put together this slide and um, and here in the purple, I put some of the actions that some of the local agencies are going to be taking uh, in the near future to comply with SIGMA. And then over here, I put some of the, the milestones. So, um, so th there are milestones for DWR. They actually have a to-do list of getting information out to us so that we can proceed. And then there's milestones also for local agencies. So, uh, so one of the milestones, one of the requirements is, you know, we, we need to have a groundwater sustainability agency. And so San Benito County Water District um, is forming the San Benito County Water District Groundwater Sustainability Agency. They've already put in their notice to the Department of Water Resources. And as of May 25th, San Benito County Water District GSA will become the exclusive GSA um, 
for those basins of Bolsa, um, Hollister, and San Juan. And so again, this re uh, represents an important <laughs> continuity. And uh, the deadline is June 30th, so they will make it ahead of the deadline. <coughs> then uh, after that, um, we're going to start thinking about funding, um, the groundwater sustainability plan, and get to work on it. And then, for San Benito County Water District, GSA, we need to start on working on the GSP and have it adopted. And the plan, as I understand it now, is to get it uh, done before the deadline. So the deadline for GSPs is 2022 for most of the medium and high priority basins. Now there are some additional ones that have been deemed critically overdrafted. And Pajaro is one of those. And for those, they need to turn it around quicker. They need to have their GSP done by um, 2020. So I just wanted to make a point of that. So overall, we we're moving ahead in a very systematic way. And um, there's going to be a lot of outreach as a part of SIGMA. A lot of outreach. There's a lot of potential for opportunities for people to get engaged. So uh, with that, I'd like to say uh, please stay tuned. And um, we will be working on SIGMA. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Bill Avera, who is the uh, city manager of the city of Hollister, and we'll talk about water supply.